Cornucopias is a cutting-edge open-world MMO set in a world where humanity has ascended from the Earth's surface and created a breathtaking new world in the sky. This fantastical realm is a system of floating islands carved from the land we once called home, now encased in radically advanced dome-shaped structures suspended high above the clouds. Each one is a futuristic marvel with its own unique environment, identity, and thriving communities. It is within these domes the epic journey begins. Here, players take control of their own personal avatar, which gives them the freedom to choose their destiny. Be immersed in vast landscapes, explore vibrant settlements, and engage in a myriad of activities such as crafting, commerce, combat, racing, and more. Welcome to a world where the sky is no longer the limit. Hi everyone, welcome to Kopi Cafe, episode 85. Got Rob Gregg here and Josh Jones, and we're excited to share with you what's going on in our world today. Um, actually, a little snippet of what's going on, because there's a lot going on, and we're trying to keep these uh, episodes a little bit more brief uh, to test that out, see if we can give you some rapid fire content. So that's that's what we're doing, and we'll see how that works. We might go back to the old format. I don't know. Give us feedback. In fact, that's one of the topics for today, but we'll get there in a second. Um, so coming up in today's episode, you've got uh, the affiliate linking program we've told you about. We're going to talk a little bit about tokenomics and uh, more associated with that. We're going to talk about the land rush preparation that we are in and uh, then we'll get to the feedback questions, or feedback section, questions, and leaks. So if you're ready, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm not going to wait for you to respond, though. Rob, what are you yeah. drinking? Goodness. I have this little device. It was St. Patrick's Day, so happy St. Patrick's Day. So it usually is, as all Guinness drinkers know you should never drink guinness from a can but apparently this device makes it drinkable so i'm going to try that out so so what are you drinking josh so you put that on and it does something carbonated wise like so i do that press this little button it which comes out of that little mouthpiece down there yeah wait <laughs> and then you put the can at an angle it just made you a beer tap okay it's a it's tap a beer tap yeah and we'll, and we'll we'll see. I don't know. I don't see any gonna... head. I'll build Is it up flat. To it. It, it appears to be flat, but it, it won't be in a minute. Huh. I'll come back to it soon. Okay, fair you enough. You can see, looking pretty nice. Nice. All we'll right. We'll come back to it. Uh, I am also drinking a beer, but you've seen it before. Athletic. Uh, non-alcoholic non-alcoholic brew run wild ipa it's quite tasty very nice you know i quit drinking almost 20 years ago wow i've talked about this a little in the past with the community um or in another kopi cafe i was a wild child until i sobered up um and i missed because of how early i <laughs> nice pour because of how early I quit drinking, I missed the whole craft beer like revolution. I don't know if it occurred over there in the UK for you guys, but yeah, we all have all kinds of terrible beers over here. I mean, here now it's like there's an entire wall of a grocery store is dedicated to all these different craft beers. I yep. missed all of that. I didn't like for us, it was like you choose from 15 beer brands in college and that was that was what i had as as options yeah. but now it's like there's freaking 50 different non-alcoholic 
a hundred different non-alcoholic beer yeah, brands. I mean, there's, crazy. Yeah, there's even a zero percent Guinness. Zero percent actually seems to be a trend over this last twelve months that I've noticed. But we've had all those as well. Because... We've had like black sheep, all kinds of weird local beers and and stuff. Yeah. Like, and the IPAs, but I'm not a fan of IPAs. To me, it just tastes like washing up liquid. Yeah, the um, I I love it. it tastes like kind of grapefruity well, or something. Cheers. Anyway, I was yeah, not yeah, to, cheers. Hey, I mean, it looks like a Guinness. Yeah, it looks good. Looks good. Okay, here we go. Let's give you guys some fun stuff. The affiliate linking program is going to be starting soon, uh, but that is not available to the general public because first off, we need to test and see what works, how it's going, all of that stuff. So we're going to start with a small select few um, and and see what happens, but. We might open that up in the near future, but basically all it is is somebody that's a content creator can get an affiliate link, help drive traffic to the node sale, and earn a small commission based upon anything like that, that uh, any sales that did occur. Um, so that's that's going to be you know a good tool for content creators, should help get more awareness of Cornucopius as a whole is the uh, real intent there. Like ideally, we... We just get a lot more exposure. So everything we're doing right now is ta trying to take our marketing and make it scale and increase, uh, you know, in terms of organic content and community content and all of that good stuff. Now, uh, that affiliate link won't just be for node sales, will it? It'll be. No, no, no. Yeah, Super. it's uh, that was just an example. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, that's just that's just one of the things it could do. Uh, you know, if we had a uh, F nine vehicle sale coming up, they could send it there. Um, just any sales that we have running, basically, I believe. Um, currently, I think it's going to be set up to any sales that they point to our marketplace right. link that's on the website. <clears throat> um, yeah. Might require further modifications for something else, but uh, pretty slick. Um, we could have used a third party for it, but it was something that was so simple for one of our devs that, um, and he had a he had a, a space where he could get into that real quick. We went ahead and got yeah, it done. I'm, so. I'm sure content creators and guilds will be interested in all kinds of affiliate links. Yeah, that's a great idea. Content creators, guilds, um, could be other projects on Cardano mm -hmm. or Ethereum or whatever. Yep. Yeah, um, interesting, interesting thought there. I mean, there is a broad application, so we'll we'll see how well that does, and then uh, we'll make it more open when when the time is right uh so that's fun okay tokenomics um and what i mean by that is the flow of copy token and use of to copy token within our ecosystem and how is that going to work the utility of it uh we're not talking about the breakdown of you know the rewards pools and things like that we're talking about more of uh more of the flow of the token so um that we have mentioned uh, for quite a while that that was going to be coming, and we're very close with that now. We were hoping to deliver a two-page doc this week, but what that's turned into uh, after a few more meetings and discussions, and guys, this is incredibly complicated, and we're trying to make it as simple as we can, um, but there, there's just been a lot of talk. We've talked to another economist uh, on a consulting basis that's likely going to come on and help us with the in-game economy. So we'll do that in addition to the machinations modeling that we've previously yep. mentioned. Um, and this is everything about that is just our effort to try and get this as quality of an experience as we can. You can also create an economic environment that completely destroys the balance of the game. And so uh, David has been very helpful in encountering with certain uh, ideas and thoughts to help make sure that we keep the balance of the game and the integrity of the game. Cause that is the utmost important that you guys have fun when you get in there, get in there and play. So, um, so here's, here's what's coming up. The we're, we're going to uh, what the reason we're pushing it a little bit and we're not delivering that two page paper is because we've added several other topics uh, that we're, we will deliver information on next week. One of those. And so we have one more, conversation with the economist that we want to do and then we'll we'll yeah. be all ready to reveal that information we got, we got to you three, guys. three people working on that now yeah it's insane three experts yeah, yeah i know uh it's a lot it's just yeah. you, there's regulatory issues to think about there's in-game flow there's what does the tech allow us to do there's just mm -hmm. all sorts of variables 
Um, and in the end, we're going to land on a solution that's quite simple yeah. for the most part, but it took a lot of evaluation of multiple different variables, variables and approaches to, to get there. Um, at least I hope we have one, one of the experts who's actually turning a lot of that information into a readable, more yeah. digestible content for the for the wiki for the copy yeah wiki. yeah the original 30 page paper he's helping us yeah. to get that concise and into some Hopefully very understandable understand. language because yeah. that one was a little bit more yeah. um in depth with some math and yeah we're, you know, we're going all out for this we, it's, it's got it it's you know it's really important it has to be has yeah. to be right so 100 percent. yeah we need to present it right um and okay, so here we go. The, the, this is the topics we're going to cover. The details on the original vesting schedule and forecasted circulating supply. We're going to cover faucets and sinks of the economy. We're going to cover detail on reward pool mechanics, utility of the Kopi token, and um, yeah, and that it'll be the only currency in the marketplace. There'll be some information uh, around that. So uh, that's that's basically what we're covering uh, and, yeah it's a lot of sections and and information that you me david rob uh or david you twice well, that's twice. you me david matt ben we like we kind of all need to get an agreement on before we push it out jeff ant uh i'm not going to list off the whole team but like we we do all need to be on the same page uh, so that does make it somewhat challenging um, because it's such a big deal. I mean, such mm -hmm. an, an, a very important part of the game and the ecosystem for you guys, our community, where it's just it's taken uh, a lot of work. Make sure we get it as as refined as we can. So next uh, week, I'm excited we'll about that. It's going to be a lot of stress to just get it out there. Yeah. So hopefully everybody's happy with it. I think there will be. Uh, we'll we'll see. Yeah, it will be. You know, like we say, it's, it's super important. We've we've got a lot of experts on it, so yeah, we're, we're very confident. We just need to yeah, you know, if a few if more T's and I's. If it's not, um, you know, if it takes refinement and improving, and if it lands flat or whatever, you know, at least we've known we've done our due diligence mm -hmm. and we've done everything we could think yeah, of like to, we do with everything you know we we, we we analyze it to the smallest detail yeah yeah big vision means you got to think about a lot of different factors yeah. when evaluating all sorts of different things um so okay i can't wait to get that done and over with and in the community's hands yeah it looks great it's gonna be helpful in a lot of ways all right next topic is the land rush preparation so you put together a, a, a mirror board on that you want to walk us through a little bit of some of yeah, your I thoughts mean, we, on... we, we we spoke a lot about having a year plan and a 180 day plan and, and a 90 day plan and, and you know that's that's also we've, we've turned it into like an internal gantt chart so we can see everything that we need to do and what needs to happen in what order if, if there's any dependencies and, and, and stuff like that so for the land rush which which is which the first one will be for solace so solace one two and three everybody needs to go in and and have at least a couple of weeks of looking around both of them the land rush will actually be on the web browser so 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 everybody will be able to 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 go via via the web browser and participate in it but we have to do a lot of pieces before that comes together so I, I mean, I can list some of the stuff that that yeah, will work yeah, yeah. just, let's, just let's to get just that. List off some of that, yeah, yeah. So, so to get that, I mean, first, first of all, we need to. I mean, it sounds it sounds pretty basic, but we we need to have we have to have the world travel system in place because you have to go from Kalido to to the central hub. So that's another deliverable as well. Nobody's seen that yet. So we have to go to the central hub, and from the central hub, you'll be able to walk across walkways this this might be new information actually to to either of the of the solaces to mm -hmm. either three of them 
So that has to be in place. So you can actually go into Solis and look around. Um, we also have to complete the, the, the hooking up of the database because everything at the moment saves locally. So the, so the way we're doing that is, first of all, we're, we are starting that very small. We're, we are looking at saving the holocaches to the database, which means we have to create the database. We're, we're going to use the same as, as um, Amazon does for their new world MMO. So we're going to use DynamoDB for yeah. for that and we're going to write some apis and 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 some some client server stuff there so so that will start off with the holocaches we then will progress that that's that's almost finished we're then going to start saving the racing data um and that actually then is is leads on to on onto onto the racing league and, and leaderboards you know so that branch that opens up some other options but but for the land rush itself then we have to look at um, doing the NFT swap because everybody's got kind of blank NFTs at the moment. When you actually choose your land plot, we have to finally decide whether we're going to give you another NFT or, or we're just going to use that one. So we need to decide on that. We have to complete the actual web interface that you are going to choose your land plots with. We have to get that hooked up to the database as well. So when you choose that, um, only one person can choose one slot and then it's allocated towards it. So we have to do that. And we also have to have the ability, which is part of, of a different roadmap, uh, which is guild tools. No. Which... Just kidding. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. I had to have a little fun. No, guild, guild tools, which, you know, we've been, we've been planning for for a few years now, but that will be in a number of phases and in the future we will sh we will have some conversa deeper conversations with guilds we'll invite them in we'll do some presentations and we we'll, will we'll show you what the the initial plan for for the tools are but for phase 1 which is part of that set which will be will be used by by many people is the ability to allow somebody else to choose a land plot for you because obviously, if you've got five, six, seven hundred land plots, and you're unlimited, maybe a limited amount of time, you might want to allocate them to other people, so that empower somebody else to to choose that plot for you, without giving up custody of that. So that will mm -hmm. still remain in in your in your wallet. Somebody else or, or many people will you'll be able to say you can choose this for me. So you're empowering them. So if they make a mistake. You know that that's that's you know cho choose who you want wisely, but we'll also give information of of how long and, and how that whole process is going to work. But that leads on. There's a few another roadmap that builds on top of that then, which which is where the guild tools parts comes in, and it's also very similar to like a renting system. The, the, these systems are all interconnected. We have a we have a roadmap for them, but this is the very first step. So that has to be done, and we will release that more information. And, and when do all these steps need to be in place? We now think we are going to be doing the Solis land rush. I don't know. <laughs> da -da -da. Drum roll, I don't have my drum roll up. So we, we I'm gonna say Q3, we are aiming for the start of Q3, but the reason I'm saying Q3 slippage is nobody will be upset if it ends, if it, you know, if it's the end of Q3, but yeah. we're, we're looking at, so that's July, July. Yeah. July, August yeah. Or, or September. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, and we, we talk about the, the, the plan at that same time, we're, I'm moving on a little bit, actually, from the conversation. We're, we're then going to be looking at, at the second land rush, which will be for Esperanza. Mm -hmm. So once that's out, out of the way, we are building Esperanza 1, 2, and 3 at exactly the same time. So we're they may also get released to the public to run around with at the same time. So I know we talked about having each month, but now it looks like we'll, we will probably reserve these, release them all at the same time, and then have that land rush. 
Yeah. So that's very likely, again, to be Q3. And then Q4, we will look at releasing. Hopefully, it's going to be tight. Fortune yeah. 1, 2, and 3, and that land rusher. And therefore, completing what we've said, you know, all all nine with the land rush by, by the end of the year. But the, That's huge. The, there's tons of stuff to do. Yeah, there is. And, you know, that, that needs to leave uh, room for flex, but that is our goal. So mm. um, you always need to have good, difficult stretch goals. The reason it seems doable is that we've sped up. So I have a few points to make based upon what you just said. Number one is in working through Solace 1, 2, and 3, we've added several junior environment artists that are now trained on the workflows. So they already have the skills within Unreal Engine, but they're now trained and accustomed to the workflow for these Solace checkboxes and for how we we move that along. Um, so that has a, a occurred, and so we've we've improved our our team size there. In addition to that, David's improved the workflows to make it even more efficient uh, with some of his innovative um, designs and things, that, tools that he's made that are totally custom to us that help in, improve that process. So both of those things combined really accelerate things, which is which is fantastic. So that's why it seems believable we can pull this off because the pace with which we're currently knocking through Solace, it's it's going rather well. It's yeah. great. And the other point uh, that I was going to make there uh, is that the framework, the guilds, you, you mentioned a lot about the guilds, <clears throat> uh, guild tools. We're going to have a framework and an agreement to work with guilds uh, that's basically allows us to uh, say which guilds we're validating and vouching for. And we're saying, yes, these guys have agreed to X, Y, and Z. Uh, so it's safer experience for all. So the game integrity is maintained so that we can all operate effectively together. So that should improve our relationships and how things work within uh, with certain guilds if you were to choose to join one. And uh, you can also choose to go on your own. And, and it's it's the user's choice, but there's options for everyone. Anyway, we're going to have a framework for that. That's been in the works for a while, along with all the planning. But Rob's main point there is that we know for the land rush that you guys, some of the guilds own a good amount of land NFTs, and they're going to need a fair way to go in and select those properties uh, because one person can't do that for 400 properties. So they need to be able to sign it to guild members and things of that nature. So all of that's in the work. I, I mean, everything you just said, it's like, that's a lot that we've got to pull off by July. Um, but I feel good about it. Yeah, and towards the end of the year. I, and, you know, we've also now got six testers as well. So that's beefed up. So that's how we can get into all these giant worlds yeah. and, and test them over. We're, um, you know, those are kind of like the giant worlds and I'm mixing these. What we then need to do is we need to put things in these to do. So we'll also be be completing the, the mining system. We're hoping to get that in place. We'll have the hunting gathering. We will, we will look at, we've got a really detailed crafting, crafting. internal economics, player economics, system that we plan that might that probably take about four months to to build so we, we will be starting that looking at the plan uh, within the next couple of months or so so that will be happening with the, with the programming team yeah, they'll be working on that parallel. as well yeah uh, as well as the mining system so when you do go into solace and esperanza you 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 might not necessarily be able to do mining and fishing from day one, but there'll be signposts saying you, you, mm -hmm. this is clearly where a mine is. This is uh, the other resort. And we'll explain more of those as they come closer. Um, yeah. And we're also looking at, well, building the server scaling at the same time. We're looking at doing season X. We've got the cornucopius racing league. We've got the nodes coming on as well. <sighs> yeah. We've got yeah, the a lot. So oh, yeah, a, and the nodes are, are, are going in parallel as well, thankfully. Um, 
not, not everything is super interconnected, thank goodness, mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. there are, the, the more connected it is, the more internal people dependencies. I remember we've we got having. a team of 42 people. Yeah. Yeah. So there are teams working uh, on these individual things in parallel, and then some of it requires integration, like the server scaling stuff is requiring our backend team to work with our game programmers. And so that has taken longer, but we are on phase three of that now, which is where when they build that out, the automatic server scaling uh, can scale to millions. So we have made significant progress there, which is huge. Uh, yeah, so a lot of great stuff in the works. Um, very exciting, really. And it's in, in, in a year, where, I think that's why I feel so overwhelmed. I was telling you uh, before this Kobe Cafe, I'm like, I'm exhausted. I mean, we have, yeah, uh, we have a lot. We, there's just so much happening. Well, while, you, while you're in the building and the planning phase, you know, every, everything's exciting, everything's possible, and stuff like that. But when you when you start delivering, and when you're getting close to, to those delivery dates, Execution. that's when you have to look at all the details and think. And then you get a little bit nervous. Is is this going to be okay? I mean. We, have we put enough content in there? Can you wait another month for that? What now? What can we actually put off, maybe yeah. to 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 get something else absolutely nailed? But yeah, we, we, yeah, we've we've got we've got a lot. It, it will come pretty quick and fast. Um, yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting summer, and we're gonna go to consensus and 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 show off there, and we're gonna have some other places in between yeah. as well. So it's something for us to do. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we've announced consensus yet, but yeah, we'll be a consensus. Um, we not, okay, we have uh, I think we did. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so, next up, next question uh, section is feedback. Um, we're thinking about bringing on an industry topic for Kopi Cafe. We want to have David on as regularly as we can um, for just little quick snippets. He couldn't join us today because he is immersed in the weeds. Uh, with exactly the type of thing you're talking about, avatar creator, like there are so many last minute details and variables coming into play together for the avatar creator. So he's like heads down on that. Um, so I said, don't worry about it. Um, but feedback for Kopi Cafe, like, do you want us to do an in industry topic? Uh, we're thinking about doing stuff like that. Would you like us to have... Um, more special guests from other projects or from the team. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Just throw it in the comments of this episode. We will read them and uh, just get an idea of what you guys think. So thank you for watching as always. And uh, let's move on to the questions. Or Rob, did you want any feedback on anything else? Um, well, we've... The, our Kopi Wiki actually has just been updated. Git book, I've, I've just thrown out a new update so if you have a look at that it looks slightly different it's a bit more responsive and stuff like that so so that's you know it's just a so yeah we didn't update it they did right the gitbook platform yep yep very cool yeah go check it out okay so we are on the fun questions section of kopi cafe rob are you ready mm -hmm. it's not too bad this you know good Good. So you're going to use that device in the future? Yeah. Is that reusable? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is from DB Cooper. How long are the in-game seasons expected to last in relation to real world time? So we are looking at our seasons to, either, to, to have four seasons a year, which naturally 52 weeks in a year would, would come down to 13 human, human weeks per season. Um, not sure how long the the pre seasons will be season season X and, and maybe some of the alpha or beta seasons, but eventually when everything is live, the seasons will either be twelve or thirteen weeks, as in twelve weeks, and then maybe one magical final week or straight thirteen weeks. But we're looking at four four seasons per year. We're pretty sure we'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. This is a question from Black Knight. In Kopi Cafe 71, you talked about possibly choosing the plots according to particular resources and proximities of each town. Will there be some type of variety within the same town in addition to the size of each plot? Episode 71, is, is, have you just come to the project because we're on 85 now? Are you just catching up? So, uh, or are you just 
going back and just making sure that we're, we're following through with what we're saying. I get the question. impression that this person watches regularly and, and this has been on their mind and yeah. there, or they might have dug back. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So the, when you get to go and look around Solace, what, what, you'll have this little device that you'll be able to pop up. It might be a hologram or, or it might be a graphic eventually that you know that will develop over time but but what that device will do is it will tell you what resources are local to to the land plot that you're looking at and it should also show you what resources are around everywhere so if there is a mine locally it will show you that if there's a if there's a dis if there's a like a lake or if there's other points of interest all of those kind of things should be shown on on that in game but also when you go onto the onto the interactive web um, map application the, the the land rush you should be able to see them along with all the points of interest that, and, and stuff like that so we're we're going to try and give you as much information as we can in game and and also probably probably on the website where you'll be able to zoom in and, and zoom out and maybe choose places as a favor and, and yeah. come back to them later yeah we, we're gonna we're gonna try and make that as as fun and as informative as, as we can do okay the final topic is our leak oh yeah so i'll it's go ahead and bring that this. up That's that's our leak for today. The uh, <clears throat> the bear, as you can see, that's the animations. He wasn't connected to the ground properly, so it almost looked like he was a bear moonwalking. But um, oh, I can see the gifts coming from that already. But hey, that's a, a really that's a that's a good looking realistic bear uh, yeah. with great animation. That's one of the most complicated um, all built in animals. Um, it's a realistic bear, and oh yeah, there we go. And uh, yeah, I think the animation looks pretty awesome. So a lot more to come on that. Some some exciting stuff coming with that. But um, that's, yeah, that's just part of filling out the world with animals. So yeah, in terms of animals, I think we've barely just begun. Uh, <laughs> I can barely tell what you were alluding to there. Indeed. All right. Hey, thanks everybody for I'll watching. The ball. You know, we like to have a little fun here and there, but. Have a wonderful rest of your week, Indeed. Uh, weekend, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. All right. Bye. Bye. Don't care what you say. Don't care what you say.